Did you pack your shirts? Yeah. Sunglasses and passport? Yeah. How about masks and hand sanitizer? Oh. Anyway, what are we going to do about this? Uh, don't worry, we've still got a week to go. Diet hard, low calories, you'll be fine. Oh, that's a relief. <gasps> I can't wait to go on holiday. Bellyproof, we want to introduce you to some of the lesser known techniques behind a successful body transformation. And we introduce you to some practical advice for taking your results to the next level. The full series and bonus videos are all available to watch for free at bellyproof.com. No, we are not going to tell you to eat less, train more, run for five hours a day. We also won't ask you to count calories or drink nothing but water for a week. We are here to show you something different and exciting and help you achieve a physique you can be proud of. So stick with us and learn how to become... I'm Jacob. I'm Rob. This is Moby. Ah, bonjour. And we are Bellyproof, an alternative fat loss approach designed to take you from this to this in as little as five weeks. We want to teach you new concepts you can use right now to get results you can be proud of. In the previous videos, we revealed our own body transformations with dated proof, explained why traditional approaches fall short, and showed you how to force your body to burn fat by breaking it first. We also took you through the Ice Ice Belly Test and shared the free mini routine, which you can start with at home right now. If you haven't watched the first video yet, Pause this now and watch it first. In this video, we're gonna give you an insight into what makes stubborn fat so damn stubborn and what you can do about it. We will also cover adrogenic receptors, brown fat, visceral fat. So if any of these sound interesting to you, keep watching. After you finish this video, go ahead and watch the other videos in our series where we cover everything from our nutritional line protocol, which involves zero calorie counting, to a full breakdown of the science, showing you what a belly fat workout should look like. The series also looks at our movement first approach, the advanced science behind belly proof muscle, and anti-aging science, or what we call club mitochondria. If you're not sure where to find them, they're linked below. Before we start, we want to recap on the sequence of fat breaking and fat burning, which is at the core of everything you're going to learn. If what you see next makes no sense to you, you need to go back and watch our first video and it will all be clear. To save time and make it more fun, we are going to explain it a little bit differently this time. With cartoons. In the body, fat burning happens when a fatty acid is extracted from the fat cell and sent to the mitochondria to burn. But there's a problem. The fatty acids are combined in a trio and shackled to a glycerol chain, a triglyceride. They are locked up in a prison fat cell high up on Mount Adipose and guarded by the evil alpha 2 receptive yeah. Luckily, a supergroup of heroines, the Sisterhood of Lipolysis, Tear, Agri, and Grimmel. They have what it takes to break the glycerol chains and set those fatty acids. Free. Don't miss the fatty acids burning it up live tonight at Club Mitochondria. Before we get started, we want you to think about two statements you often hear together in regards to stubborn belly fat. The first one is, you lose fat evenly from everywhere. And the second one is, your belly is always the last to go. This makes no sense. If you lose fat evenly, then why don't you lose your belly fat at the same pace? There's no wonder there's so much confusion around belly fat. Let's talk about spot reduction, or the attempt to target fat loss from a particular part of your body. Oh. 
Okay, so the issue of stubborn fat comes down to three key points, and they're all connected to blood flow. The first crucial thing to understand is how fat is distributed around the body. If you take the human body, we have our organs. Surrounding our organs is a layer of fat called visceral fat. This is often known as the deep, dangerous, hidden fat. Next slide, please. Then you have your muscles and finally subcutaneous fat and of course the skin surrounding everything. Subcutaneous means under the skin. It's important to distinguish the deep, dangerous visceral fat from the more visible belly fat. Visceral fat sits under the muscle. You can't pinch it and it doesn't jiggle. It makes your waist bigger by pushing everything out and putting pressure on your organs. Too much of it is known to cause health problems. Luckily, because of its central location, visceral fat receives great blood supply. Belly fat, the type you want to lose, is subcutaneous fat, meaning it sits above the muscle and it jiggles. <laughs> if you can grab it and pinch it, then it's subcutaneous. This type of fat does not receive good blood supply. The second thing to point out is that blood flow to fat cells is key to the process we call fat loss. You need to get lipolytic agents like our secret agents, Ramona, Tess, and most importantly, Adri, to the fat tissue. The only way you are going to do that is if that fat tissue receives a good supply of blood, which is how things travel around the body. The same is true when it comes to fat burning. When you break fat, you extract the content of fat cells, fatty acids. Now, using the blood, we can pump those fatty acids into the muscles where they can reach the mitochondria and burn. Your belly doesn't receive good blood circulation and the same is true for all stubborn fat. Blood circulation generates heat and this is why areas with poor circulation feel cold to the touch. Finally, you've got your adrogenic receptors or binding sites, alpha 2 and beta. We call beta receptors the good guys because they help us break fat. On the other hand, we call alpha 2 receptors the evil alpha 2 receptive monsters because they block this process. Lipolysis, or fat breaking, happens when ADRI binds to beta adrogenic receptors. If ADRI, on the other hand, binds to the alpha 2 adrogenic receptors, nothing happens. No fat breaking. The adrenaline just goes to waste. This is something that works at scale. Get more adrenaline and beta receptors and you get more fat breaking. Get more activity from the pesky alpha 2 receptive monsters like around your belly and you get questions like Why do we store more fat in the belly? And where do you have more alpha 2 receptors? Yep, stubborn fat with your love handles and your lower belly fat being the most dominant places. As a quick recap, the reason your stubborn fat is so stubborn is because it receives less blood supply and it's high in alpha 2 receptors. Before we move forward, let's talk about spot reduction. Spot reduction is when you're told to work on a muscle group in order to lose fat in that area. For example, it's the idea that by doing a lot of sit-ups and crunches, you can lose belly fat. It's both. You can't spot reduce fat, but you can improve targeting. If you work on your abs, for example, you would be increasing blood flow to your abdominal muscles, but not the fat that sits above them, subcutaneous belly fat. In fact, in a minute, we're going to share why the opposite may very well be true. What you can do, however, is improve blood flow to the areas you want to target, thereby improving access to that fat. You can also take steps to inhibit alpha-2 receptors and increase the chances of ADRI binding to the good guys, your beta receptors. We'd love to hear what you've tried in the past to specifically target belly fat. Was it spot reduction, lemon water, or training in trash bags? Perhaps you've tried to inhibit alpha-2 receptors. Let us know in the comments below. Let's solve the problem of blood circulation. We wanted to see what we're dealing with, so we got ourselves a thermal camera. Here's the beach. Here's a nice cup of coffee. Here's Moby getting toasty by the fire. And here's the reality of stubborn fat. As you can see, it's cold. This is something we have tested many times, and it's always the same result. Now that we can see blood flow, we can hope to solve it. 
Mainstream wisdom tells us that exercise improves blood circulation as your skin gets hot and sweaty. Well, that's what we believed anyway, until we put it to the test. It turns out that when you exercise, where you had good blood circulation, it will now be better. But where you had poor blood circulation, it will now be even worse. That means that easy to lose fat will benefit, but a stubborn fat like your belly or your love handles will now become even more problematic. This is something you can feel for yourself doing the ice ice belly test. Try this. Feel the temperature of your face and compare with that of your belly and your love handles. That's weird. Why is the belly so cold? After the test, go and train. Gym, run, whatever you like. And at the end, test the temperature again. We guarantee that your belly fat or lav handles will now be even colder, which means they are getting less blood. And as blood carries Tess, Adri and Grimona to the fat cells and the fatty acids out, you can guarantee the belly fat will be the last to go. Here are six great ways to tackle this. One, heat. If you have a hot shower or a heat pack or simply decide to massage your belly, you will notice it gets warmer, at least for a little while. And yes, this is even something you can see on a thermal camera. You can take advantage of this during rest periods between sets and give your belly a little rub a dab 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 Two, light, high-tech therapy gadgets like far infrared panels and red light therapy absolutely can help in a significant way. The good ones aren't cheap, but luckily, the sun is absolutely free. So get yourself out there. Just make sure no one's watching. Three. Parasympathetic activity, the opposite of fight or flight. Just by taking your recovery seriously and being more mindful of slowing down, ideally between sets when you rest, you can send blood away from the working muscles and more into the subcutaneous layers. Four, clothing and temperature. Exercising in warmer climates or clothing, as well as the use of compression clothing. These do help a little, but they make exercise uncomfortable and restrictive and therefore, we don't really recommend them. Five, what helps the most with blood flow is exercise design and positions that leverage gravity. If you have your arms up, for example, your heart needs to pump the blood upwards, sending it away from your stomach. The closer you are to the ground and the more you leverage gravity, for example, resting with your legs elevated, the more blood circulation you will have around your belly. You'd be happy to know that we also address this in the free mini routine shared in our first video. When you go through the routine, you'd notice this exercise, which calls for you to elevate your legs up. It's not by chance. We also had inconsistent results from topical body oils or heat generating muscle creams, which can cause irritation. We also have our alpha-2 receptive monsters and just like belly fat, they too indeed are very stubborn. <laughs> Luckily, we have a few defenses we can use against them. There are supplements that can help inhibit alpha-2 receptors to a small degree. These are considered prohibited drugs in some countries, so unfortunately we can't mention their names in this global platform. But if you wanted to look them up, you can run a search for alpha-2 antagonists. Another defense we can use is sleep. Good quality sleep with the focus of producing melatonin through the night is one of the best possible ways you can inhibit alpha-2 receptors. Melatonin down-regulates the activity of alpha-2 receptors. Get good quality sleep and the activity of your alpha-2 receptors will be reduced. We have more content on the channel, specifically on this, if you want to learn more. Lastly, intermittent fasting. Fasting for a long period is a sure way to inhibit alpha-2 receptors. A 12-hour fast is okay, 14 hours is better, but longer is more optimal. Basically, the longer you fast before the workout, the less alpha-2 receptor resistance you're going to encounter. We cover this in a lot more detail in the next video about the Lion Protocol. We want to cover two connected subjects we often get asked about. These are brown fat and visceral fat. Brown fat is used to increase body temperature when we are cold. It's typically found in small deposits in the neck, top of the spine and the chest. It's not places you'd typically look to lose fat from. Brown adipose tissue, and even more so browning of white adipose tissue, has received a lot of attention in the last few years because people are excited about it being more metabolically active. 
and because people are always looking to burn more calories at any given moment. Unfortunately, as we explained in our first video, burning calories is very different to burning fat. And especially considering brown fat both regenerates quickly and is not found in any place you're likely to see a difference, we think the excitement is misplaced. You can lose brown fat, but it's not gonna make a significant difference to how you look or feel. So we don't address it. Visceral fat, on the other hand, is a slightly different matter. This type of fat is relatively easy to lose, and even at a healthy weight, your body will store 10% of its fat mass as visceral fat. Consider visceral fat a health factor, rather than body fat which you can see or feel. This is because visceral fat affects your health more than it does your appearance. So, if you've been drinking alcohol, doing drugs, smoking, or just having a really unhealthy, stressful lifestyle for a while, it would be a smart move to improve your cardiovascular health and reduce your visceral fat. The good news is that visceral fat, whilst dangerous, is easier to lose. It's very high in beta receptors and it receives great blood supply as it's not subcutaneous. If you're following the basic principles of fat breaking and fat burning, you will effectively reduce it without even trying. If you want to take it further, after you finish your training, you could make use of cold showers. You could go sea swimming or go in the swimming pool or even jump in an ice bath. The cold exposure will move blood away from the surface area and more towards the deeper layers where visceral fat is found. If you choose to do this, progress on your visceral fat will be faster although belly fat will be harder to target. This is a choice you will want to make based on your individual circumstances and whether you want to focus more on belly fat or the deeper visceral fat. If you found this information helpful, please share with someone you know that struggles with belly fat. And don't forget to like, subscribe and ring the notification bell for more great content like this. Don't miss the next video in our series where we talk about nutrition, lions, and the dark side of calories. Next up, have you ever been out and about and overheard a conversation like this? I can't understand how you do it, Bridget. Eating all of this crap and getting away with it. Well, Melody, I've been blessed with eternal youth. Good genes and a fast metabolism. No, my God. You're delusional. Maybe you should train a little bit more and eat a little bit less. I mean, do you really need to eat that much lettuce, Melody? <coughs> Greedy little piggy. I'm doing great, thank you very much. I've already been to the gym and done my Pilates. What magic mushrooms are you on? No, oh, don't be silly, my lovely. Here, let me order you a nice chocolate fondue. Excuse me, waiter. <laughs> After all, she's going to stay fat anyways. <laughs> <laughs>